Yo, so, you know, a lot of people have been uh, congratulating me and sending me messages and shit about uh, the five-year anniversary of If You're Reading This and shit. And, you know, I look on socials and I see, like, producers and, you know, other people that were involved with the artists and they get to talk about how proud they are of the shit, you know. And, you know, it's different for me. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty much taboo for me to even talk about it, you know. I, I pretty much try to act like it don't even exist. The biggest, the biggest project of my entire career, right? And that's, that's, that's pretty strange, but unfortunately, you know, I don't have the good memories about it that everybody has. You know, my good memories were all murdered, you know what I'm saying? Like the day, uh, Neek Mandela, you know, y'all, y'all buying that bullshit since he came out of jail, like he's whatever. But the day he, you know, put my name out there, you know, and it just blew up my whole spot. And, you know, that shit just fucked everything up for me, bro. And it's so crazy because, man, it not only did it mess that up, but in the confusion of that shit, you know, I, me and, and DJ Drama and Cannon, like that whole side, we had, our ties were severed because of that shit because it was just so much confusion and everybody was trying to find out whose fault was it and this and that like y'all just don't know what them phone calls was like y'all just don't know what them text messages was like like y'all don't know what that pressure was like it was a lot it was hot and um that's one of the biggest things i regret was was fucking up that relationship with them because in the end that nigga drake and and me them niggas is best friends now they watch basketball games and they do shows and shit together you know so it's just like what the fuck was that even for what the fuck was all of that for you know like all the the stress that it caused you know and i know it everybody else is able to move on because everybody else's careers was established and shit but my career wasn't established and i was looking at that if you're reading this moment you know at the time when i did it i'm coming fresh off of not fresh off you know three years ago i was dropped and not for my publishing deal, but I was dropped as an artist and I'm working these these bullshit ass jobs, I'm working Publix, I'm working Target, I'm working factories and warehouses, I'm working, you know, different temp agency gigs. And then if you're eating this came and it's like, oh shit, my life is about to change, you know? And, uh, you know, it's just crazy how the biggest, best moment of my life, you know, after a tweet turned into like one of the most stressful moments of my life, you know? So, you know, I, I envy all the other producers, artists, writers, whatever involved that get to just look at it and look at it in a good light because it wasn't a good light for me. Uh, it was hell for me after that shit, you know? And five years later, you know, still trying to shake that shit, but it is what it is. Glad y'all enjoyed it. Whatever, man. I'm trying to move forward. Uh, to the music game, labels, artists, whoever, take a chance on me. Take a chance on Quinn Miller, man. Y'all know I. Y'all know I do these records. Y'all know I got these records. I could do this shit in my sleep. Take a fucking chance on me, man. Everybody want to kick me to the curb, man. Everybody want me to just play the background, and they just want to just uh, give me ideas for this person. Give me ideas for that person. Fuck that shit, man. Give me give me the opportunity, man. Give me the ball, man. I see a lot of artists out here that I know for a fact I can box with, man. I can box with all these niggas, man. So take a chance on Quentin Miller, man. 2020, new decade, man. It's just over with, man. Take a chance on me, man. That's it.